Last time on Suikoden, we went to the Dwarven Village to find out more about the Burning Mirror. While the Dwarves can make a weapon to destroy it, it seems we're too late. Something's burning in the distance, and it is probably the Elven Village. Uh, the music changed, so the situation's diffused ever so slightly, but nonetheless, this is still bad, so, uh, yeah, we're going to have to make our way over. Uh, you shouldn't have to worry about the enemies. Like, if you didn't upgrade your weapons to level 9, which would be foolish, then you might have a bit of trouble, but otherwise, that should be cake after the first attempt. Alright, so, back out on the overworld, it definitely seems like we're too late. Though the fire does seem far smaller than it was in the background of the Dwarven Trail. Alright, well, let's ruin this emotional scene real quick, because once you leave and come back, uh, this kid's here. Where'd you come from? Uh, what an inconvenience! An entire people died horribly. I gotta change my map. So, this is Templeton, the, uh, region's map maker. He's very, <laughs> very important. He's going to head for Torin Castle. And, now that he's joined, he is going to give us the world map. The world map's incredibly good, because, of course, you can see, you know, all the locations of the villages and whatnot, but more importantly... It's always out, baby! So yeah, you can just walk around the overworld, and you don't have to worry about getting lost because you can see exactly where all the villages are. You know, Cobalt Village, I had a little trouble finding it before, but now I know it's right here. Thanks, Flashing White Dot. Fancy meeting you here, Monado, but I mean Valeria. Oh, I'm sure we can take these guys. They're just soldiers, we can beat them up. I mean, Sheena's here, so he can just roast them with electricity. Uh, no. I disagree with this plan.
I mean, I, I can still just, like, beat up the soldiers. That That's a terrible plan, and I don't like it. Valeria, you, you do realize the Empire is extremely untrustworthy, right? The Elf, the Cobalt, and whatever the fuck the rest of you are. Haha! <laughs> I'm Atheist! Didn't see that one coming, did ya? Alright, so we've actually got veteran soldiers, meaning they're tougher than the default soldiers. Uh, Kiro Mimi is in the back, and he's a short-ranged character, so they made the same mistake. Again. This is one of those situations where it's like, somebody testing the game had to say, Oh yeah, this doesn't work at all, you fucked up, and Konami was just like, eh, whatever. Ship it anyway, it's not that important. It's only one fight that's made to introduce this character and make them seem impressive, but eh, we'll just have the first battle with them be underwhelming because they can't do shit. Anyway, veteran soldiers hit hard and at this point in the game have a fair bit of HP again, so yeah, they're definitely a refresher for the soldier class because they were definitely getting kind of old. We could just wipe the floor with them no problem. Uh, that being said, though, they're still not too terribly tough. Uh, group attacks, of course, work very well. That's why Sheena's frickin' fantastic. Uh, Moss is okay here. He is not doing anything terribly amazing, but also he can hold his own, and I do believe he uh, countered back there, right? I'm pretty sure. Anyway, though, yeah, that, that battle was done. Two group attacks, and they were gone. I wonder how Cleo would have fared against these guys. She's definitely a good mage. And that's 4,200 bits. Oh, they're still here. I wouldn't say we're losing. We're, we've still got plenty of energy left, guys. You all weak. Also, Kirimimi in the back and has not been hit. Wait, Matthew? How do you get here? Are you secretly an elf? Oh, sure, we're in... When you hear Liberation Army and there's only six people, you stay, but when there's more, you run away. I see how it is. We're not tough enough for you. I mean, why is not the best question? Haha! -ha, I'm also here! Me, Sonic the Hedgehog, in elf form! I can really move. Kirkus, you don't understand. I have an attitude. Wait, didn't you already give him the ring back? D did you just, like, high-five him? Haha, <laughs> nice one. You're gonna propose. Indeed. It would seem it's time? For the battle at Pano Yakuta Castle. So, this is our first major battle. It looks a little something like this. Oof, and we're outnumbered. That's not good. Still, though, we do have a fighting chance, if Matthew is to be believed. This is also our first time meeting Kwanda Rosman, and, um, that certainly is a helmet. Alright everyone, aim for the ears. Okay, so, the game doesn't actually explain how you do a major battle, but it's basically a sort of game of rock, paper, scissors, where you have three attack options and the other option. Uh, other is not an attack, well, usually not an attack. Uh, it's basically an effect to add on before the uh, start of each round. 
You can only use each option once, for example, we can use thieves, but we can only use them for this round. Thieves are pretty much your most valuable units because they predict the enemy's attack. Now, he's going to be using Quanda's attack, which is basically a charge attack. It's actually a special move, it will usually be called charge, but Quanda's attack is basically just a powerful variation of it. Which is good because mages are very good against uh, charge attacks because they completely stop the attack and do a lot of damage as well. Look at that! His special attack right off the bat, and we don't even have to worry about it. That being said, every time you use a character, they do disappear. You can only use them once per battle. So Giovanni here is going to be our last thief. So hopefully he can successfully predict the enemy's movements, and they're going to be using a magic attack. Uh, if the thief fails, they might also steal 2,000 bits, but that's basically useless. So, when the enemy is using magic, we want to use <laughs> cooks. Uh, we want to use our archers. And, just like with using magic against uh, charge attacks, they're not going to be able to do a thing. Charge against charge and uh, archery against charge will do damage to both sides. Uh, but yeah, archery against magic and magic against charge is going to be uh, just... You, you don't get hurt at all, it's very good. Uh, now, next I actually want to try doing cavalry just because while I don't have any predictions left... Uh, I just kind of figured he'd do the last thing he hadn't done yet, and unfortunately I couldn't recruit uh, anyone from that side. I would figured I'd ask first. If I were smart, I would have used Matthew to boost my power, because even if he hadn't uh, gone with archery, uh, that would have helped me unless he used magic. Oh, and if you're wondering why charge beats bow, uh, it's because if an archer shoots you, you can just run over and knock the bow out of their hands, because they're not trained for melee combat. So yeah, we're gonna take a few losses, but honestly, their numbers are so low, and, you know, again, archery's really not good against charge at all. Does a little d bit of damage, but not too much, and they're basically done. Uh, had I, uh up to my charge attack, this would be finished, but lastly, I figured they'd try charge again, so Vicky, you're up. And yeah, they did go with charge, so Quanda's major weakness was doing all of his attacks and doing them in order. I could have been in trouble if he used uh, archers again, but nope, he decided he'd go with the charge, the fool. Uh, that being said, apparently characters can, like, Perma die? I've never seen it happen, but yeah, it's it's possible that uh, when you send a group to charge in, that apparently they can be killed. Uh, it's more obvious in the second game's major battles when uh, characters are killed off permanently, but here, yeah, I've never seen it myself. There's just uh, dialogue for some characters if they die. Oh, and also burning mirror. That's not good. Maybe don't stand here. That That's extremely bad. Don't do that. I don't think it's supposed to do that, right? Oh, hey, it's Chief of Dwarf Village. How's it going? Uh, by the way, remember when you joked about how you wanted all the elves to die? Hey, <laughs> guess what? That actually happened, but, uh, thanks for saving us, I guess, you dick. And that is his actual name. But please, call him Chief. Chief of Dwarves was his father's name. Oh, well, okay, that's the entirety of our party chosen. They're all characters we've had already, of course, and uh, before you go in, you definitely want to change formation because all the short-range characters are in the back because this game is very dumb about distributing characters. 
even when it does so automatically. Alright, so yeah, this is our party for uh, this castle, Pony Akuda. Here's Kirimimi's stats. Victor's behind, but he'll catch up quick. Of course, uh, if you're smart and... Well, not really smart so much as, if you can see the future, make sure to put some good stuff on uh, Victor. Not only for himself, but, like, stuff to give to Kirimimi. Or, you know, you can keep that as well, but Victor's easier if you don't use him. You can just have a character waiting back at the castle with items for a character you'll get later. Again, though, this only applies if you have Future Sight. Anyway, there is some healing at the start of the castle, and a steel shield. Uh, I'd suggest you give that to Kiromimi because his defense sucks a lot. Uh, that being said, I was dumb and I gave it to Valeria because... Valeria. <laughs> uh, anyway... You've got some veteran soldiers. Of course, you've already seen them, but uh, since this is just a random battle, I figured I'd show them off. You know, why not, right? And by that, I mean I'm just going to show that they exist, because honestly, there's not much of a point of showing them. They are stronger soldiers. Alright, so, continuing on, there's nothing this way. Uh, that being said, there is stuff in this room. Well, it's kind of part of the same room, but whatever. Half armor. Uh, I thought that would go to Victor, but no, he can't wear that either, so... Yeah, half armor users are even uh, even uh, more rare than shield users. Anyway, here's a devil armor. Works pretty much the same as the uh, armor we fought back at Torin Castle, but he's stronger now. That being said, devil armor works a lot better when he's in the back, protected by other things, because while he has a decent bit of HP, he's not that good. <laughs> You kill him pretty quickly, and he didn't even get to attack me. But again, he can uh, attack three times over in a single turn because he separates himself. But without other enemies to protect him, he's really nothing impressive. And we got another gauntlet, which is actually good for Victor if you don't have one already. Uh, if you're like me and you didn't use him. I think most players generally tend to stick with Victor, though. Uh, even with a wide variety of characters in Suikoden, most people uh, just stick with the party they know, which isn't a bad idea. I mean, it definitely makes your main characters more powerful, which makes the game a little bit easier overall. Uh, that being said, though, yeah, I, I do like a bit of variety, and of course I want to show off more characters in the long run. Old Book Volume 1, uh, this isn't going to be important yet. And we've got Devil Shields. So, Devil Shields are kind of flimsy. Uh, honestly, for a shield enemy especially. Uh, I believe it has a meh physical attack, but it also has a party attack, which, if I remember correctly, is also meh. <laughs> and see, a single crit took him out. I mean, granted, Mir's got a level 9 weapon, but like... I don't know, it's a shield. It should still stand up to attacks. At least it was able to stand up to Kirimimi. Would have been pretty pathetic if it didn't. And he just barely survived, so let's see his meh party attack. Look at that! That sucked! It did damage to Victor, kind of? 40 isn't that much to Victor, because he's got a lot of HP. Actually, even being behind, he's got more HP than anyone else, so yeah. Even if he did take 40 damage, that's fucking nothing. Yep, that's the Devil Shield. That was honestly extremely pathetic. Those guys... not good. <laughs> Uh, well, I, I guess at least they survived long enough to show off an attack. I don't think I fought them uh, at all through the rest of this. Alright, are there any uh, enemy, any enemies left over? I've forgotten. Gale Crystal, I believe that's actually the upgraded Wind Crystal. Uh, I'll probably explain that later on, just because I don't really have the time now, and I'm not equipping it anyway. But rest assured, it's like the Wind Crystal, but better. So, you probably want to attach that to Luke if you use Luke a lot. If not, just give it to whoever uses the uh, Wind Rune. You won't be sorry. Oh, hi, how's it going? Okay, so, this is Dragon. Oddly enough, he's actually weaker than the zombie dragon, or at least he feels it. While you do have a set party, it's honestly a party that feels a lot better than the one you had back at uh, Torin. You have a little more... Uh, 
leeway with runes in the long run provided you remember to give everyone at least something, so you've probably got something powerful except on Kirimimi because he just joined, and honestly he is the weakest link here, but even still, that's only 100 damage to my weakest character. Like the zombie dragon, he does have a party attack, but it's honestly not much better at all. It also does very little damage. Like, the zombie dragon, if it used its party attack more than one turn in a row, at least one character would die. And that was at a point before you had a sacrificial Buddha. You do now, and while there's only one, if you die, you don't have to be stressed about anything, because you're probably not going to get more than one character not knocked out, so I really doubt you're going to be like, oh no, I used my only sacrificial Buddha, this battle is forfeit, no, there's no way I can keep another character from dying, nah, I think you're going to be fine. Honestly, it probably is a relief that he uses his party attack pretty frequently. Of course, it probably has about the same mods as the zombie dragon, but like... Eh... <laughs> I would say I got unlucky, but with those numbers, it wasn't terribly impressive. The only other thing Dragon has going for him is far too much HP. This battle drags on, which is why I'm skipping most of it. But he's got 6,000 HP, and all that means is he lives for far too long. And not even in a sense of you might lose because you can't win a battle of attrition, it's I'm kind of bored with this dragon now because he's not good at all. Of course, the other good thing here is Valeria and her Falcon Rune, which is just damage. It's just a whole lot of damage. I was kind of hoping to finish off this battle with a Muda Muda Muda, but Romeo just decided, you know what, I'm going to be faster than Valeria for this turn. Because I feel like it. Dragon gives a pretty good amount of uh, EXP despite being a really easy boss, and wow, we are level 29, that's very good. And Romeo's close behind. Alright, so, that's the dragon guarding, uh, what's his face? Quanda Rosman, I forgot his name. We're about to take him on, but uh, I don't remember who he is. I know he's got a doofy looking helmet. I haven't just been standing here all along. I mean, I don't know who you are, so I didn't think you would, but okay then. Alright, so, we're going to be taking on Quanda Rosman, but we have something a little bit different for this battle. So, welcome to our first duel. Duels are based in stats, as you'll see in a moment. Uh, Mir wasn't completely healed from the last battle, so he's got a little HP missing. You might want to fix that if, you, uh, if you're if you worried. So, this is also a rock-paper-scissors battle, with a little bit of insult sword fighting from Monkey Island. You have to read what the character is saying and figure out what they're going to do based off that line. Of course, desperate attacks are very dangerous, but you can counter them with a defend command. If you attack, it's gonna hurt. Speaking of which, Quanda's about to attack. So, we're going to use desperate attack instead. Uh, if you both attack, you both take damage. If you both defend, then nothing happens, of course. So, yeah. Like with major battles, there are superior matchups, but also, like, not everything is, like, completely forfeit. Like, if you choose, like, the same option. I do kind of like duels a bit more than major battles in this game. This game's major battles aren't the worst, those vary throughout the series. Duels mostly stay the same, just like with small mechanical changes between each game. I do kind of wish they'd explain it at some point though, or at least give you like a safety battle, because if you don't know what you're doing, like you're probably not going to automatically understand what's going on in the duel, you might die, and if that happens, you're going all the way back to the burnt village of the elves. If you even saved their last. Because uh, it's been a while since we've saved. 
But yeah, duels are pretty fun. I say as my opponent just collapses after screaming a whole lot. But yeah, insult sword fighting plus a little rock, paper, scissors. It's pretty neat. It's just sometimes it feels a little uh, trial and error -y. Though if you know what you're doing, yeah, battles go fast. Like that one did. Yeah, you pointed that out earlier. Okay, so you absolutely want to choose the second option, because if you choose Vengeance, your time is up, you do kill him, and you don't want that. As you might have noticed, Quanda's acting a little bit weird, and of course Gremio's there to point that out. And thankfully, everyone's calming down just a little bit. Because uh, Kirimimi and Kirikas were kind of out for blood a moment ago. So yeah, this is one of those situations where the villain was actually possessed all along. I complained about that enough in Final Fantasy IV, but it's not as bad here. I mean, to be fair, you did kind of need that sort of thing, because, I mean, as you saw- Oh, uh, by the way, uh, second option, don't, don't say you're right, or you will also kill him. Don't do that. Quan does not a bad person. Even if he did kind of end up burning an entire village down, but yeah, uh, it's not awful here because it's not the main villain that's possessed, and also, in fairness, you did see what I did with Kraze back there, right? I did not hesitate to kill that man, but that one didn't matter. If Quan de Rosman was just, you know, he, if he wasn't controlled by the Black Rune, uh, his actions wouldn't be justified because he did slaughter an entire race. So, like, yeah. Without that little bit of, hey, actually, he wasn't in control of his actions, I think most players would just kill him, but again, don't do that. He is a party member now, and uh, if you don't recruit him, in the long run, bad things will happen. You don't want bad things to happen, right? You want good things to happen, like this. See, Kirimimi's family is back, isn't that sweet? Oh, right, Sonic's here. Uh, hi, it's me, Stallion. So Stallion's my name, speeds my game, that's what I say, that's my catchphrase. Piece of cake, no sweat. Indeed, it's been quite a long day. Let's go home. Alright, so, it looks like fantasy racism is solved. I mean, the kobolds like us, the dwarves seem pretty chill now, and almost all the elves are dead, so now we have to feel sorry for them. That takes care of fantasy racism, right? Everything's all good. That plotline is over. We don't have to worry about it anymore. Trust me on this one. We're done with it. Alright, so... I know we did end with a different party, but you know what? Here, we're taking this party to the bath. Because, I mean... I appreciate Sheena and Moss. They did a lot for the group. So, I think next time on Suikoden... We're gonna go recruiting again. Stupid sexy Sheena.